Rebel Buddha here. Welcome back to the show. Today we have a special guest, super yoga teacher Natasha Melman. Welcome to the show, Natasha. Thank you. How are you so, doing? I'm good. I'm like really excited to be here. Nice. This is my first podcast. Your first one ever. Yeah, my first one ever. I think this is episode 14 for me. Whoa. Or maybe 13, wow. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, it's happening. It's fun. It's easy. It's Just fun. hanging out with your friends, catching up. Yeah. And uh, to seeing what people are up to. Hmm. So what what you do today? Today, um, what did I do today? Um, well, I just came from teaching at the school at, at Viewpoint. Where's that? So in Calabasas. So you teach at yeah. a uh, high school in Calabasas yoga. Yes. Yeah. What's the yeah. how? What's the it's class like? Awesome. Um, there is fifteen students, and um, it's really cool because. They have to show up. <laughs> Mandatory. And, yeah, kind of. But they don't. They don't. They don't know that. I tell them that like how awesome it is that they are showing up. Mm -hmm. And um, today was really cool because they came in. We have a thing where they come in and like we we teach in a circle. So I started doing this mandala where they set up their mats and um, pillows. Or today it was today I had them grab like bolsters and blankets. Um, because they came in with an energy like everyone is like, oh, we have a test later and can we be excused early? And so I was like, all right, you know, that informed where we're going. So we did a 10 minute, 10 minute yoga nidra practice. So they got really comfortable, which is not an easy task. Let's share the audience. Oh, what is gosh. yoga nidra? Um, yoga nidra is, um, it is a high... Um, God, I should be saying it's a guided. <laughs> it is a guided. It's like a guided meditation. Mm -hmm. There's about sixty points that you go through the body, and it's very simple. But it drops the practitioner deep into their body and presence. So they're very laying relaxed. on their back in yeah. post posture vasana, and yeah. you go through a guided deep relaxation where you go mm -hmm. through the heel, the foot, the knee, yes. the sit bone, yeah. the spine, the shoulder, etc. Yeah. And Super it simple. allows you to drop deep into a, a say the tantric bliss um yeah i don't know if it's tantric bliss yeah. it usually knocks them out within like the first five minutes yeah. like it does it did for me for a long time because they're just exhausted first of all mm -hmm. so it's like oh just watching you know bodies relax excites these me. are teenagers <laughs> yeah but any anybody like in yoga i just there's something about that <sighs> yeah, yeah i feel it I think that's why I love teaching yoga mm -hmm. and facilitating that feeling because stressed out people like stress me out and I guess I didn't realize like how much of that was my whole life growing up was like I, I was just in a constant state of pretty much stress and tension without knowing it. I had like, you know, like they say everyone goes around having mild form of anxiety. I probably had like mild plus and so did my family. Sad to say, it was hard. But anyways, and you um, grew up we're... in California. Well, I came to California when I was eight uh -huh. from the Ukraine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, that's an awesome gift of an experience. But it was really quite stressful to like be an eight-year-old and you don't know what's happening and no one's there to answer your questions. So, so you can speak Russian. Yeah. Full. Totally. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean. Uh, Probably in my vocabulary is not like amazing or anything, but I can hold a conversation. Okay, I, can I can't really tell. Da. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's cool. weird. So yeah. you didn't even practice yoga until you came to my class in like <laughs> 2000. And, that, and like you sat. 10? All I remember is like, I don't know. I was like, <laughs> that was really funny. It was, um, I'm in your class, and I was just like, all I remember is like this 20 year old. I was 22 or 22, 23, yeah. And like, you know, not too shabby looking. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you have me in some plow pose, and you're like sitting on top of me, and you're like, how's that? I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> I like yoga. <laughs> nice. So, <laughs> you, that was the first place you took yoga was at a Gore Park yoga. yoga. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Yeah. When yeah, it was still it next definitely, to winners. It definitely rocked my world. It definitely met me where I was at mm -hmm. with the practice. Like it was music and heart and warm and cozy and like everything about it was what I needed during that time. And um, so it really got me hooked on those like endorphins and like feeling, you know, 
feeling something that I wasn't sure community? I was feeling. Community, yes. It definitely came out of hiding because I was like just kind of a... I kept to myself a little bit. Well, well you're a mom. I'm a mom. Yeah. Yes. I won't so say I raised... kept to myself, but I had like... I didn't have a... Like I didn't really have a community except family and, right. and my close friends. And you already raised three kids before you even became a yoga teacher. Yes. During that time, my kids were teenagers. Two of them... Yeah, no. There was like... It was actually a really tumultuous, tumultuous um, kind of a shifting time mm-hmm. when like the teenage years were at their worst and we were just like, our eyes were open to like, what is happening? Is this my life? Oh my God. And so perfectly yoga came in at the same time and then I started therapy at the same time as that. And so we were like, I had a vision. I just had this like clear vision of how I wanted my life to look and how mm-hmm. I wanted my family to look and feel. And at that time, it was sort of like a, really, is that even possible? I didn't know, but I was just like, no, let's do this. Bring this awareness in. And I read Osho and we went to Thailand and just started having awareness after awareness, aha moment after aha moment. So your heart was opening to something yeah. different. My heart was opening. My vision was there, but... But my habits and like the samskaras, you know, the stuff that's like ingrained in us were nowhere near in alliance. Mm. So I was like, actually, it was a very frustrating time, too, because I already knew what I I had a vision of what I wanted and I would see it. But I was so far away from that in like how I was being and who I was that it was just like it was kind of frustrating. What were some of the vices that were keeping you back? Um unawareness basically like just my level of consciousness you know and like and also the practices so yes i had the physical practice happening and i had good talk therapy but i didn't i didn't yet at this at that time tap into what the possibilities of like a yoga practice how it can support you Mm -hmm. so that didn't yeah then that happened like when you know i just had an awakening to like oh my god i Someone's like, do you teach? And it sparked, you know, a thing. So how long did it take for you to practice yoga to first take your first teacher training? Um, I think I was practicing for four years, four or four and Without even years. thinking about becoming a teacher. I, I never was like thinking about it, but I was in Mexico once with like the family and friends. And like we were a little on the beach and we were just like a little elevated. Can I say that? Yeah, right? Sure. Elevated in our experience. Yeah, we can talk when you're stoned. Yeah, okay. we're all like, right? It's Mexico. Oh no. Yeah. Sorry, kids. No. <laughs> um, and we were just, I was like, hey, let's do this yoga thing. And I just, it was a sunset. I just remember this moment so clearly. It was so beautiful. I was like, I'm like just doing the practice and I have my three friends and family mm-hmm. who are like here. And then like, I looked down, you know, between my legs and all of a sudden I see like all these people there's like 10 people like gathered that are practicing that weren't you didn't even know no I didn't know and I'm like I'm leading this practice and I think I had a a feeling in my body Mm -hmm. that uh, awoke to wow I didn't know that was possible and then yeah and then I did a teacher training at inner power yoga when it was in Woodland Hills yeah when it was in Woodland Hills it just I saw I went I stopped by there and I saw a flyer that Mm -hmm. a teacher training starts next week and I didn't think it. I just trusted the instinct in my body. I just was like, I'm doing it. What year is this? And I'd never even been to that studio before. I didn't know any of the teachers. I just kind of was like, trust it, that gut feeling. What year was your teacher Um, training? So that was like five and a half, six years ago, something okay. like that. Like yeah. 2015. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And it was perfect timing because things were getting better with the, with the kids and all, all that. Like that things were settling a little bit. So I had some time. At some time, I think a few of them were maybe one or two were going to college. Yeah. And um, and then it was, holy crap, it was an intense process after that. Because that just opened a whole other level. And then when I started to teach, it was effing hard. I was faced with all my stuff. Like, really faced. Like, the teaching practice just wrecked me in the mm, beginning. Why? It was like my nervous system was completely... I I, I just want people to know this because I don't know if like other people uh-huh. go through this, but it was hard because I was so misaligned. Like mm. I wasn't where I wanted to be. You know, I had this vision of like how I wanted to show up and 
how I wanted to be or bring or bring, or have or bring. a lot of people there all the time. I, yeah, something. exactly. It was like, yes, that's another thing. Like I didn't know what I was committed to. I didn't know it was important. Um, because I hadn't thought about it. Right. Like I didn't know what I needed or wanted. Let's talk about this. So a lot of teachers, when they, new teachers, when they come into teaching, they think that there's going to be 20 people there in the beginning and there's going to be yeah. one or two people there. Yeah. Four years. Okay. Yeah. Get that. No, Even I, for I, 10 years, there's going to be three people in your class sometimes. Okay. Yeah. And get used to that and accept it and love it. Okay? I actually like it. I it's still enjoyable. have, no, I still have like two, three people in my yeah. class. A lot, of, a lot of times and I love it I, I because the, I'm actually realizing that I really like um, as much as I love to bring in a group and it's fun I do I do mm -hmm. like Lulu you know yeah. I always can like bring it and it's super fun and it's awesome the energy is great but I love the transmission for me personally I feel it like on a more personal level if I had a if I had a choice I would be like one student at a time in an intimate, very intimate relationship, you know, like guru to this, like real intimate. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love a lot of students. Yeah. I love having, like, for instance, this morning I taught at Malibu Beach Yoga. There yeah. was like 12 people. Then I taught at Agora Power. It was like a Mysore class, only two people, no big deal. And then I'll teach again at LA Fitness and there'll be like 25 people, wow. which is fun. But my favorite thing to do now is to sub somewhere like LA Fitness in Glendale or Pasadena or Valencia, somewhere really far away, wow. walk in the room right at the minute the class starts and just mm -hmm. go, Rebel Buddha here, start standing, be together in front of the mat. Wow. And just like super intense, right to it. Mm -hmm. And I give everyone a sticker at the end. Wow. And it's so much fun. And I, I get to like meet so it. many new people. Yeah. Rather mm -hmm. than just staying in Agora and teaching the same people yeah. over and over and over again. I already yeah. did that for a, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Then now I have to go out and spread Rebel Buddhism far and wide, even through the podcast. I love it. I love the sticker. It. And that's my favorite thing to do. I love it. Even after drive and I don't even make that much money, it's not yeah. about the money. Yeah. I love that about you. Thanks. I love your clarity. It's always so inspiring to me. Like when you speak with like clarity and conviction, I'm always like, yes. Mountain pose. Yeah. And, I'm, and, I'm, and also what that used to, when I'd be around people that had such clarity and conviction, it used to spark a thing that, well, maybe I should be doing that. But now I don't have that at all. Mm, I actually- You are doing it. Yeah, because I, I celebrate the uniqueness of how each one of us does it. Mm -hmm. And really that's, that's so fun and unique and beautiful like that we, can support and celebrate each other and just help each other find that uniqueness and clarity. Like that's what of I your want. Authenticity. Yeah. Like some people, you know, will want that and others will bring it in another way. And I'm like, yes, whatever, just do it. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm starting to like all these new downloads and like inspiration is happening for me big lately. It's me too. It's crazy. The it's art crazy. pedal is to the metal. Oh my god! I know. I'm super excited because yay! I'm got new space and <laughs> oh, your new yeah, house. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I know. So, so yeah. you've drank in ayahuasca before? We got, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we talk about this on the show all the time. It's okay. We do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't like know. Am I gonna get in trouble with anyone? By who? My first shot's right by who? By who? Who cares? It's Everyone's true. doing it. It's true. My kids. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to out my kids, but yeah, um, yeah. So what? So what? How yeah. did it go down? Um, it was actually an incredible experience. When was it? Um, it was about two and a half years ago on my birthday. Mm -hmm. So and well. It had been in my realm of possibility for about 15 years. Oh, really? You yeah. knew about it for that long? For that long. I had a, we had a really good close friend that was involved in the practice and mm -hmm. spoke about it and shared about it. And we were all actually like super excited. Mm -hmm. And I was in Peru once and literally I was like so committed to doing it. So committed. This was 10, you know, 10 years ago. And I missed the shaman by like five minutes. We missed the boat for the shaman. And we're like, no. Well, you weren't ready, maybe. But we weren't ready. Yeah, because maybe it was telling you not to do it. Maybe. Totally. Yeah. I didn't know that, but Because it yes. calls you when you're ready. Oh, yeah. And there's people it yeah. doesn't even affect. Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so so you had, you did it in California? So actually what led to that, because I was, I had my reservations about it. Like, I don't know. And I was, I was, I was one of those people that 
I was afraid, you know? Of course. Of course. It's, it's scary. Like, it's scary. Like, what am I going to find out? What is this going to be? What's this experience? And so I fell into a breathwork practice first. Okay. Which mm-hmm. was a two-day thing. And the first day was, I kind of tapped into it a little. But the second day, I was like, I'm going for this breathwork practice. I'm just going to go. I'm going to do this. And I was so supported. There was an amazing... Um, girl two two girls out of leandra was her name she's wonderful anyways um i felt so supported and i went in like i breathed myself into this state where i'm sitting there like light was coming out of my hands and this aura and i was like you know no no drugs Mm -hmm. nothing just breath just breath and there was a lot of reveals, a couple of things like you're safe, you're, um, it's, it's all good. But I also got a download that said, this is, um, this is like ayahuasca, like this is what it is. And you're, you're safe to do it when you're ready. If you're ready. It, so it's, it's very like, similar to the yeah, feelings of breath. It actually work. called me in that space. It okay. said like, because it, yeah. it starts working like a week ahead of time. Yeah. It's really interesting. Well, then it was, you know, the stars aligned and my friend called and it was just like, whoa, it's happening on your birthday and it's local. And, and then, like, I had a crazy snake experience three days before my ayahuasca journey. What was that? Um, so I, I go hiking on this hill every day almost for 20 years. I hiked this hill. And I've seen maybe one snake. Like, you know, never see snakes. Ever. People see them. I just never did, you know. I never even thought about them. So whatever. So my friend Mona and I are hiking one day, three days before I'm doing ayahuasca. And we're wearing these hats and the sun's like down. And we're like, she's talking and I'm looking down. I'm not paying attention. I was like in my head, I'm looking down. And all of a sudden, like right at my feet, I hear something. We stop and we hear something. And through, you know, I lift my hat, my hat and um, a snake, which... I thought it could have been a cobra, I swear. It was like a cobra energy. Coiled three times, about a foot, two feet maybe at most in front of us. We stopped. It coils three times and it goes... Really? At us. And so we're just like... (laughs) We're standing there. And like, you know, that energy. And so I grab her and she, you know, turns around. I'm like, go. And we start running. And she starts running. And I start running behind her and she slows down to see. And like, I pummel her. Oh I pull her on the ground and like she's down on the ground and I'm on top of her. <laughs> we're like, get up and run. And we're, we have that excitement, crazy energy. And like our hands are full of stickies. Oh. And like she's, she like, messed up. <laughs> she's all messed up. <laughs> and so we get back to my house and we have to like get the stickies out. So we, we're in the bathtub. So we get submerged in the bath. I let her borrow my bathing suit. <laughs> We submerge in the bath trying to get the stickies out. And I'm like high on this experience and she's really freaked out. And our, our other friend comes over and she's just been harvesting grapes. She's bringing grapes. She's like, got the grapes going. <laughs> and she's feeding us grapes in my bathtub. At that point, right at that moment, um, Lou comes in, my, my husband. He walks in and he's like, oh, what's happening here? <laughs> and we're like, we saw a snake. Da, 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 da. Anyways. Okay. An important story, but it was funny to us. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to the ayahuasca. Yeah. Um, the next day. So that was like the precursor. Actually, the two days. So two days later, before I went into the journey. Yeah. Um, I had to go up the hill. I went up the hill by myself, and because I couldn't like go in without be- being afraid, because I had I had like PTSD for the next day from the snake. Yeah, but I looked up snake. Uh You know, like to read about it. And I was so, so excited and it made so much sense to me. Like everything that it was, shedding of the skin, creating the new, Mm -hmm. um, also about rebirth, rebirth, but also this like groundedness, this meeting of this groundedness and this, this energy that's like slithers and knows and, and snakes are amazing. They're very, they're actually kind. They're just keep to themselves. They're like, don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. So in the ayahuasca journey, the snake was definitely like the guiding spirit animal. For so, sure. so how did it start? The journey? Yeah. I Give us the whole download. You drank, you went to the place. Yeah, we set intentions. And you're with your whole family. No, no, no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that maybe happened another someday, time. maybe someday. I thought you did it with the whole family. No, that was something different. Oh, Stop okay. it. What? <laughs> I want 
I'm in trouble with my okay. family. I know it's it's, okay. I just <laughs> we're open here. The Rebel Boo okay, Show. Okay, that's true. Nothing matters. Why? No one who cares what anyone thinks or yeah. what anyone cares. It's well, your experience. We do care what people think. I mean, come on. I'm shameless, man. I don't care. I I go hard now. Yeah. I post as much as I want. Hmm. I'll do the show with anyone <laughs> who wants to do the show. Well, I'm not okay. holding back. I'm not in- yeah. exclusive. So, mm. how so? What do you mean? I'll have lots of people on the show, oh, different, yeah, who do different things. I'm not going to yeah. be like only really, really, oh, really cool right. people. Oh, so totally. Every everyone has a cool story. Everyone has a cool story. Yeah. And we're only getting. Here's the other thing that was that came up for me. A recent download was like, we only get a piece of people. We only get a certain version that they're sharing in mm-hmm. that moment. Like, I really didn't have no idea what I was going to talk about. And like, I know people can just like make a whole thing about me from a version that I'm sharing in this moment. But it's like, I've lived a whole life right. and even all that said, I'm no, I'm none of that in this moment. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, who are we in this moment? The only way to find out is to touch hands oh, and, really? and like, look and just like be with each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. We can do the rest of the show like this. Yeah. All right. It'd be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So then what happened? <laughs> That's my latest thing. It's yeah. Just, so fun. I'm actually we can, like... We can keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that for the rest of the show. Yay. For five minutes or something. <laughs> okay. That'll really freak my family okay. out. Okay. Fine. Okay. Um, no, but yeah. But seriously, I'm kind of obsessed about this whole thing about how we are... Um, how we can be with each other better. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you drank the stuff. I drank back to the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that I got a lot of. I had. A, I got a, during that journey. I got a lot of like awarenesses and downloads in my body about how I could show up in the world. That was so cool and revealing. And so the last couple of years have been like a an alignment work. Mm-hmm. Like how do I actually feel into that? And it's awesome when, it, when you finally like start. Feeling into like yes, you know, You're it rebuilds. Tri- I'm integrating, integrating. Yeah. It and takes I, a long time. That's a big word, and I strongly, strongly believe if you're doing anything like for me, any kind of mind expansive, you know, I don't want to say drugs, any kind of mind plants. expansive, plants, medicine, whatever it is, even if it's love and connection, that's also like mind expansive highs that you need to integrate. That's what I'm finding, like they're not safe you know people are like drugs drugs go high i'm like there are other highs that are way more addictive and that need to be um spoken to how to like manage and integrate because they also can mess your stuff up no kidding Yeah. yeah and people i suppose yoga is one of them like i've known people you know you know like to just like get high on yoga, but are not really integrating. Do you know that? Really just run away from the world. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but they're getting that high on the experience. And then just like, they can still be assholes in the world. I mean, I drive like an insane person and I still practice yoga every day. Yeah, you're one of those people. So like, okay, you um, own it, you own it. So (laughs) So, I mean, I'm a yoga person, but I'm an insane yoga person. Like I drive 100 on the freeway constantly weaving in and out of traffic Ooh. yeah like insane and and i love surfing big waves and doing graffiti and doing crazy stuff that you think that yeah. yoga people wouldn't do but that's why i'm rebel buddha yeah so it's it, yoga is not only about just being in a cave and meditating yoga is about taking action mm-hmm. and not go listening to authority and becoming your own authority and mm-hmm. finding your power mm-hmm. and not giving in to what society wants you to do. So that's real yoga to me. It's becoming an activist rebel, a mm. rebel Buddha. I like that. Yeah. So we have to push yeah. the boundaries or we're just, we're just yeah. a, a, well, a lemming. Yeah. No, the only thing I think, I think that's awesome. That's like a great, I, I love that. I guess I would add to that. The only thing I would add to that, I'm like, awesome. Do whatever you're doing. Just two things, like make sure that you're not, hurting yourself right or you're not hurting another i guess that would be my like go-to boundary or yeah rules in life like mm-hmm. then yeah just go express and do whatever you want but as long as you're not you know you're not on purpose hurting someone so driving 100 miles per hour is a little dangerous 
this. I don't want to be on the safe, road with that. When it's safe. Okay. Not like, no. Well, like when it's not safe. When <laughs> okay, I like fine. nighttime on the 210, like yeah, there's no you, one around. I know. Or the 118 in the middle of the night. You just never know. At like little 10, puppies. 10 o'clock. Little puppies. Uh, dogs and stuff. But it's, it's fun. Dogs. I like driving fast. Right. I wish I had a faster car. I wish I had a nicer, faster I'm car. I'm like, you're like going faster. I'm like, I can't slow down enough. Everyone drives so slow. I get. Like, no. I'm not, yeah. But I'm anyways, not talking about cars. I'm talking about like... Anyway, so any slow. permanent effects of the of plant medicine that you can see in your life? Yeah. Like what? Um. Well, I was just thinking about that. That word I was just saying, like, it definitely ha- has slowed things down for me in my nervous system. It showed me in my body, like, how I could feel and be. Mm-hmm. Like, um... I don't know, just like this e- more ease and trusting feeling. And um, so, and then you, once you feel it in the body, you can't almost like, I, I couldn't go back from it. Like I knew what it feels like in my body. And the medicine. The medicine, the experience. It doesn't have to be actually, again, like I'm not limiting it to plant medicine okay. or anything. It could be any experience that gives it to me. Actually, I'm finding it with this, this practice that I'm doing, this contact improv, Mm -hmm. like I'm having that same experience. Like it's an embodied experience of how you can be in the world and like the nervous system. And it just feels mushy and creamy and yummy. And it's like, I want this. I, I like this feeling. And so what I start to notice then, like as I move through the world is like all the places where that's not, where I'm not like that. And then I'm like, oh, wait, and so I do the work, whatever the work to bring that feeling to other places. Like now when I drive, it's so different. Like I used to drive just like, it was just a stressful experience, you know? And it now is. it's like, I'm having like a little, like, I don't know. I'm like having a love affair with my wheel. I love it. That's I'm like, insane. I'm like, I'm I have like, to be there at freaking eight o'clock. I mean, some That's people might mine. get like erotically like, whoa, <laughs> the way I drive. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm just like. It feels so good. And there's like the steering wheel. There's all these senses happening in that wow. moment. You can be so present. And I don't it even know. Sounds like you're on mushrooms all the time. No. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So contact improv. I need to yeah. learn it, I guess. I'll teach you, remember? Okay, I'll, teach, yeah. I'll give you a little lesson all right. the other day. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to share with the audience before we close up? Um... Oh, keep what? practicing, keep going. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just keep breathing, keep being kind to yourself, you know, keep doing those things that facilitate you feeling loved and sharing the love. So many ways into that, I love it. Music, yoga, friends. All right. Touching. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for so watching. So glad. Thank you. you. I'm yeah. very excited to have done this. All right. Yay. Boom.